Hi guys, welcome back to CS445 Computational Photography. Um, today I'm going to be briefly going over uh, some basics of how to use NumPy, um, an essential Python library for scientific computing. Um, you'll be using NumPy a lot in this class, uh, um, and um, yeah, it's, it's pretty useful for pretty much anything you might do in data science, uh, computer vision, um, other anything that involves matrices and arrays. Uh, the best resource for learning how to use NumPy is the NumPy documentation. Uh, the link is right here. Um, as always, you'll receive uh, this in the course material, um, uh, this notebook, uh, and any other notebooks we use for these tutorials. Um, with that, let's get started. So uh, you can go to numpy.org slash uh, hash getting started. Um, and there, there are instructions on how to download and install NumPy. Um, so I've done so here. So, and then we'll open up a Jupyter Notebook and we'll import NumPy. Okay. All right, so the fundamental objects in NumPy are called arrays. And um, there, uh, if you've ever programmed in C or C++, um, they're pretty much what you're used to uh, in in those languages. Um, actually, more specifically, uh, NumPy arrays uh, are quite similar to MATLAB arrays, and a lot of in a lot of interfaces are uh, are pretty much the same. Um, so some of the important attributes of NumPy arrays are uh, the shape and the data type, and you're going to specify these when you create an array. Um, and you know, you're going to use the shape when you maybe loop through an array or uh, deal with some of its uh, properties. So the shape is a tuple whose length uh, is a number of dimensions um, and the data type refers to the kinds of objects that are in the NumPy array. So it could be ints, they could be floats, um, they could even be strings. So uh, let's go over some ways to create arrays. Um, the NumPy ND array class has a low-level constructor but we rarely use it. Um, so generally what we do is we uh, we use a standard Python list. So as you can see, seek is a list here. And then we use the np.array function, which takes a uh, another type of uh, sequence and it converts it into a numpy array. So let's run this cell. There you go, as you can see the type of uh, array seek, our seek is numpy.ndarray. And this data type is in64. This is the default um, integer data type uh, that NumPy parses. Okay. Um, you can look more uh, closely at the defaults um, here at this website, the SciPy docs for NumPy, um, the NumPy and array class. You can uh, Google for the numpy.array function. Yeah, there's, uh, the resources are, are uh, really rich okay um, so alternatively uh, numpy provides utility functions for common uh, array creation use cases so you know sometimes you just want to create an array it may be empty um, or you might want it to look a certain way so uh, one way to do this is through these functions so let's run numpy.empty and NumPy.empty is going to take a tuple of uh, the shape that you want your array to be, to have, uh, excuse me. So we just want a 2x2 two two empty array here. Um, and as you can see, it's not strictly really empty, but it is uninitialized. And uh, that's the point of np.empty. Uh, it's a very fast function. It doesn't uh, initialize any of the memory locations that it uses. Yep, and that's np.empty. There's also np.ones. Um, so most of these functions uh, take a given shape, uh, as you can see here. Um, so you have to provide them with a tuple um, of uh, the size and shape that you want your array to be. So here we go. np.ones, we, we want a 1 by 4 array. That's it's one row, four columns. So that's what this looks like. And then running np.0s uh, with a four row one column array will give us this. 
So np.1s just fills up uh, the array with all ones. And np.0s uh, obviously fills up the array with all zeros. And then there's a general version of np.1s and np.0s called np.full, um, which takes uh, at least two arguments. Um, and uh, the first argument is the shape, just like usual. And the second argument is the number that you want to fill uh, the array with. So here I've uh, asked for a four element array um, with filled with tens. Okay. Uh, notice one important difference here uh, between this shape, four comma none here, and four comma one. So these are not strictly the same. Um, the four comma one array is a two dimensional array. As you can see, there's two different sets of square brackets. There's one outside, and then there's this set encapsulating the uh, inner uh, the, the inner elements. So uh, here we have four rows and one column per row. Whereas here we just have uh, a single one dimensional array with four elements. Yeah, um, NumPy has support for one-dimensional arrays. Uh, this is they're not the same as you know one comma four or four comma one, um, and we'll talk a little bit more uh, about this uh, with regards to reshaping and broadcasting. Okay, um, another useful function is called uh, a range. So NumPy dot a range, um, and basically that just gives you evenly spaced values within a given interval. Uh, I'm going to be using this function quite a bit, so I just thought I'd cover it. Um, and this function is especially useful when you're plotting. Um, it's going to come in handy, so make sure you know how to use this one. Okay, now let's talk about how to access arrays. Um, NumPy array elements are accessed using the standard Python access syntax. Uh, so it's going to be the object, um, well, here in, the, in this case, the array. And inside square brackets, it's going to have uh, some selector. So um, as with multi-dimensional Python lists, you can uh, use commas to separate the selectors for various dimensions. And uh, this colon uh, you can use to select ranges within one dimension, as I've shown here. So let's let's take a look at this. We'll make x um, a range from 0 to 20 uh, with a step of 2. So this is going to generate the even numbers between 0 and 20, not including 20. Uh, that's, that's actually important to note here. So let's run that. Um, then we're going to just take, so then x2 will give us 4. So that's 0, 1, 2. Um, and then x1, so the way to read this is x1 through 3 uh, will give us just 2 and 4. So the 0th element is 0, the first element is 2, uh, second element is, two, is, is, uh, is 4. So notice that you actually don't get x3 here. Um, that's, that's important to note. So let's actually see what x3 is here. It's, it's 6. So x1 colon 3 actually doesn't include x3, and that's important to note. Okay, uh, I encourage you to try more examples, obviously. Um, you know, you might want to try with uh, negative indices, as ranges in Python do support negative indices, as well as negative steps. So here maybe we can, you can add a step um, of 1 or of 2 uh, that will give you slightly smaller array. Uh, but yeah, I encourage you to mess around with that. Let's quickly talk about um, the memory layout of arrays. Um, so all arrays in NumPy are one-dimensional contiguous segments. Um, so uh, there's no two-dimensional arrays in memory. Um, and the only thing that's allowing you to interface with them two-dimensionally is uh, an indexing scheme that maps the total number of integers uh, in that array uh, into um, certain indices, uh, and that's managed by NumPy. Um, so these, this indexing scheme obviously is dependent on the shape, um, how many bytes each item takes, and uh, you know that's that's determined by the D-type 
associated with the array. Um, and it's also uh, important to note that data in NumPy arrays is arranged in row major order, which means that um, if you have a two-dimensional array, the first dimension is going to be the row. So the way to read uh, this here is going to be um, the first row or the zero index row and the second column. Uh, well, so the two index column, that's the third column. Right? Okay, so let's just uh, see what that's about. So we've created an empty array, um, three by three, and we're going to access the first row, last column here. Um, and there we have it, 2.058e minus 312. That's this element. So it's row major. Okay. Um, now let's talk a little bit about reshaping and resizing. Um, there are two important array functions used to manipulate the shape of arrays. Uh, we mainly use reshape, and I think you'll probably be mainly using reshape as well uh, in this course. Um, and reshape returns an array with the same data as a given array, but uh, with the shape that you provide. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Um, let's create a one-dimensional array of size 12, right? So, there it is. And now we'll reshape it um, to be a two-dimensional array with two rows and six columns. And that's what it's going to look like. Um, so, if we reshaped, uh, let's see here. We can also reshape it uh, to something else. Um, I think it's important to note here that you can pass in uh, a tuple as well for for reshape, but it's not necessary. You can also pass in a list. Uh, well, you can also pass in the numbers uh, directly um, as sequence of dimensions. So I can do this, turn it into a uh, three-dimensional array with 12 uh, rows, one column, one cell deep. Um, yeah, so feel free to mess around with with that. For now, we'll reshape it to three or four that looks like this. Okay, note that uh, what resize does, now resize is a little different, it changes the shape of the given array in place. So at this point, after doing x.reshape three to four, we haven't actually modified x in any way. The output of this expression is a two-dimensional array of shape three by four. However, once we execute resize, let's see what happens. Let's get rid of this for a second. Yep, so resize doesn't produce any output, but it does modify the array. So let's query what happened to our array. Okay, so there it is. That's Let's try this one more time. So we have X here, right? It's uh, an array of 12 elements. Now, before doing resize, let's check out what happened to X. So X is like this. Now we'll do resize, then query X again. Okay, so this is the same as the output of X.reshape, but now we've modified X. Okay, uh, well that was reshaping and uh, resizing. I encourage you to try multiple examples. Um, there are some caveats that arise when you're trying to um, you know, reshape uh, the channels of images. Uh, you have to be really specifically careful with the order in which you reshape. And you might want to use some reshapes and transposes. Uh, when those situations arise in this class, we will, uh, we will be specific uh, about them. Next, let's talk about array slicing and indexing. Uh, like we saw in the array access section, arrays um, are accessed using the standard Python bracket syntax. And uh, so in this section, we'll look at various forms of the selection object, uh, other, what you can put inside uh, the square brackets. So uh, one thing you can put inside the square brackets are ranges, of course. And the basic range selection syntax is start, stop, step, like we saw. Um, so let's look at this. Um, let's look at an example of this. So here is a one-dimensional array 
of 100 elements reshaped to a two-dimensional 10 by 10 array. Um, and the way we would select the bottom 5 by 5 subarray. So how would we do that? We want to start at the fifth row um, and the fifth column and select everything to the bottom and right of that. So when you don't specify a, uh, a stop value like this, NumPy assumes that you mean you want to iterate till the end. So it'll replace this with the it'll replace this with 10 implicitly in this case. Um, yeah. So and uh, the default value for the step is is, is obviously one. Um, okay. Uh, and here we're messing around with uh, what the value of the step can be. So we can even have it be negative values. So if we put negative one, what we'll get is starting at the fifth row, uh, fifth column, we'll get the entire five by sub five subarray uh, to the top left of that. But um, it'll be rotated 180 degrees. So this is a neat way to rotate a subarray 180 degrees. Just change the step to negative one. Um, I definitely give this a shot. Um, another thing we can do is uh, take the whole array and change the step that we use. That way we can, you know, choose various elements of the subarray, uh, do some sort of downsampling. Um, yeah, so definitely uh, experiment with these values. Um, and as always, if you have any questions about this, uh, do let us know in Piazza. Okay. Let's talk about some more objects we can put inside the square brackets. Um, the three dots or ellipses uh, object or along with the new axis object can also be used for indexing. Um, so what the new axis and ellipses objects are for is, well the ellipses object is for um, substituting all of the first few dimensions. Uh, so um, a specific use case might be uh, like the one here. You want to view an array of all first elements along a third dimension in this array. Right? So uh, what, what that would mean is you want to select... Um, so essentially what you're doing is computing this. So what just the colon means is take everything. Assume the start, which is uh, you know by default zero, and uh, as, you know implicitly assume that you want to go all the way up to the end uh, along both the first and second dimensions, and then just take the zeroth element. Right. So here for three dimensions we can do this, but if we had a ten-dimensional array, you know instead of putting ten colons here, we can just replace all this with three dots. And that will give us what we want. Oh, we forgot to run this cell. Okay, there we go. So that's what the the ellipses are for. Um, you can also use the ellipses to fill in the rest. So if you just want the first row, the first uh, the first element along the first dimension, and everything in that element, you can, you can use the ellipses for that. But this is equivalent to just this. So that's why it's it's not as useful as in the first case. Next, let's talk about the new axis object. Um, so the new axis object is used when you want to expand the shape of an array uh, along a certain dimension. So let's look at x. Uh, it has shape three comma three comma three, and now we'll select all the elements in X using just semicolons. Um, so three semicolons means that we take all elements along all dimensions. But at the second position, we'll insert an NP dot new axis, and now we'll look at the shape of this. As you can see, uh, there's an extra dimension here, um, and uh, it has a depth of one, and and the NP new axis object is basically just an alias for uh, the Python none object. So if you had a none in here, 
this would basically have the same effect. Um, using the np.newaccess object at the beginning uh, without any other um, dimensions would prepend uh, a dimension at the beginning of the shape. And uh, you can use the ellipses and the np.newaccess object in tandem uh, to easily append um, a dimension to the end of the shape. So this is the way you can expand it along the last position. Okay, now let's talk about advanced indexing. Um, so advanced indexing is triggered when uh, the selection object, the object inside the square brackets, is uh, a non-tuple sequence object, another ND array, or a tuple with at least one sequence object or ND array. And there's specifically two types of advanced indexing, um, integer and Boolean. Uh, it's important to note that unlike slicing or basic indexing, which returns a view of the underlying array data, advanced indexing always returns a copy of the data. So what a view is, is um, uh, it's, it's kind of like just a pointer. It just shows you the data uh, when you print out uh, the result of a basic slice. You're not, uh, you're not copying any data. You don't have a copy of the data. But advanced indexing always returns a copy of the data. Okay, so let's look at integer indexing first. We'll start with uh, the same array we were working with earlier. Um, so what does this look like it will get us? So each of these sequences of integers uh, are of length 2, which means that uh, we'll be selecting two items. So this is basically specifying uh, the value of one dimension for two elements. Um, and the same with these two sequences. So basically we will get the uh, elements at um, 0, 1, 0, and 2, 2, 1. So, let's run that. Okay. Um, now, let's let's change these numbers around a little bit. Uh, let's, you know, ask for 2, 1. Okay. So, you can pause the video and uh, think about what this will return here. Um, okay, let's run it. Okay, we got back 21 and 9. So now what happens if we change the length of these sequences? Okay, note that uh, each one of these has to be of the same length. So you can't change the length of one of them and uh, have the other ones not be changed. Um, so here we'll, we're asking for three values uh, from the array. So let's run that. Okay. Okay, so that's how integer indexing works there. Um, so that's, let's look at a different array. Look at a 4x4 four four array here. And uh, how exactly would we select just the corner elements of this array? So 0, 3, 12, and 15. Um, so one way we can do it is with integer indexing. And we'll define the corner rows as a uh, 2D array. So this is what it's going to look like. And the corner columns as another 2D array. And what NumPy lets us do here is just pass in these 2D arrays um, to uh, the square brackets and it'll give us the corner elements. So how, how is this being interpreted here? Basically, NumPy will match these element-wise, uh, or or broadcast them, um, and we'll get the elements at those positions. Um, so here we'll get element 00, 0, 0 3, 3, 0, and 3, 3, which are uh, the corner elements in a 4x4 four four array. Okay. Um, so we can also achieve this with broadcasting. Uh, so if we define the corner rows here like this and the corner columns like this uh, as well, um, we can use np.newaxis to force a broadcast here. And what will happen is um, NumPy knows that uh, because this becomes a, uh, a 
three by one array, and this becomes a uh, this is still a, a, a single one dimensional array. It'll broadcast them into these implicitly, and uh, we'll again get the corner elements just like we wanted. Yeah, I encourage you to mess around with uh, these values and, uh, and and try this. Um, this is yet another example of of broadcasting. Um, so uh, the shape of this is obviously three by one, and here we have just a uh, three comma zero uh, or three comma none uh, shape. So what the output shape of this be? Um, and it is a three by three. So think about why that is. Okay, let's look at Boolean indexing now. Um, arrays in NumPy are compatible with Boolean operators, uh, and we can exploit this to essentially filter items in, in the array. So let's look at this, um, this range uh, from negative 10 to, to 10. And if we want only the positive elements, we can just pass in uh, this expression into the square brackets. And that will give us an array of all the positive elements. Remember, this is a copy. Um, this is not referring to these elements in this array. This is a copy. And uh, similarly, we can find the even elements um, by passing in this uh, selector. Um, you know, we can we can get the odd elements by just changing this. There we go. Um, these are the odd elements. And uh, yeah, it should be noted that um, you can modify uh, the values of the original array using uh, these types of operators. So, uh, as shown here, what we want to do here is increment all the negative values by 10. And let's go ahead and run this. This should give us n no particular output, but then if we query x again, we'll see that all the negative elements have been incremented by 10. Okay, well that was uh, the NumPy tutorial for CS445. Um, you should go through this one more time on your own. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to ask questions on Piazza. Um, this, you'll be using NumPy extensively, so this, this tutorial should come in handy. Okay, thank you.